When no one else can understand me When everything I do is wrong You give me hope and consolation You give me strength to carry on And you're always there to lend a hand In everything I do That's the wonder The wonder of you And when you smile the world is brighter You touch my hand and I'm a king Your kiss to me is worth a fortune Your love for me is everything I guess I'll never know The reason why You love me as you do That's the one The wonder of you I'll never know the reason why you love me as you do.
20 lunches, so I've gone to pick up the cookbooks. And there's only two boxes and I was thinking, is there really a hundred in there? But it is about 10 pages shorter than the last one. So it's not as thick. But here it is, woohoo! So now I will talk about it a bit more and uh, show you a little, a little flick through, a little sneak peek. Yes, and I'll let you outside. Okay. Come on. Come on. Hello, honey bunches. It's here. Um, just went and picked it up as you saw 100 fresh copies and um, yes it's a 93 page um, A5 white wire bound because A that sort of matches the aesthetic of a bit more than a black wire bind would or silver for that matter as was the case for the first cookbook um, and as with the first it lays flat which I think is a pretty important feature for those of us who like to have the cookbook reliably remain open while we make stuff in the kitchen. So to run through some design things, um, the front and back covers are a thicker GSM, they're 300 GSM, um, so it does not just feel like a series of pages bound together. It's wire bound, as I said, all the recipe photography as well as some other pages are full colour pretty much, and the rest of the pages are black and white but they're ultra groovy. For example, like this index and recipe info index page. So this is my one, I've already contacted it, that's why it's a little shiny and not matte. Mm. All the recipes, 32 of them, are gluten free and vegan, or vegan and gluten free being the actual little step that I went. The recipes are whole food in emphasis but um, taste is also really important so for example recipes like the chocolate self-sourcing pudding it does have a bit of unrefined sugar in it because it just tasted better that way when I played around with different options. Three of the 32 recipes are ones that have been improved from the blog. There's the roasted cauliflower pesto pasta, the one bowl banana bread and chocolate orange truffles. One bowl banana bread and the pesto cauliflower pasta I really just wanted to have in the cookbook pretty much because I make them so often and it's really handy to have in book form and like, they all could be slightly tweaked so that's why I did that and put them in here as I've said before for pretty much selfish purposes. Another thing about the overall quality slash design of Honey Bunches I have spent countless hours on it um, but no matter how much tweaking, retweaking, brainstorming, trying out different design things and whatnot like it's not perfect. I'm really proud of it and I love it a gazillion billion times more than the first one but know that I'm human and I totally know that there's the odd does that look right? Um, design feature or something in it. Um, it's not perfection, but it's something I'm proud of. And yeah, I don't think anyone gets to perfection, so it's imperfectly perfect. Woohoo! So the reason the cookbook is called the Hello Heavenly H Brought Home Cookery Cookbook is because I've totally embraced the, the style of cooking that I do. It's very much home cooking like and um, although groovyified I hope at least um, and it's often alluded to or described as being you know seriously scrumptious, um, bit sort of nostalgia comforting and homey and so it's really a book celebrating that. And also I tend to or aim to make food that's enjoyable by all age groups whether that's around your dinner table or making my lentil sausage rolls which were in the first book and on the blog for like a party or Christmassy family friend get together. While I do enjoy a really nice pick of food nestled amongst other flowers um, and I've also included dried flowers in the design of this a lot. Like my food photography is really quite simple. I just use the resources that are around me very lucky that most people in this neighborhood that I live in as well as our garden it's not neglected and flowers tend to thrive at this convenient time of year when I finished uni for the year and I'm looking as I have been for two years in a row 
to make a project um, like this cookbook. So the photography is quite simple even though I get away with it looking quite florally and fancy I suppose which home cooking photography generally is. The methods of the recipes as well that I tend to do is a lot of dumping ingredients into bowls or saucepans and stirring and then stirring two things together and then whacking in a pan in the oven or some combination of dumping, stirring, stirring, dumping. That makes it sound really horrible and Play-Doh like. Home cooking needs to be simple but hopefully in my version of it in this cookbook it will not feel like bland boring food that looks like Fifty Shades of Cardboard. Woo! So to talk about the recipes for a bit, um, they're definitely very nostalgia like such as the pumpkin and potato gratin or the tofu and vegetable satay skewers. There's also a nod to the like women's weekly type cookbooks which if you live in Australia you'll know what they are. They're like a series of cookbooks that are still around to this day but they're very iconic looking in their 70s, 80s sort of era and are sort of responsible for teaching generations how to cook. And they definitely appeared in my childhood quite a bit. So recipes like the honey, honey and cornflake slice, the chocolate self sourcing pudding and the passion fruit and lemon melting moments are all recipes that link to that influence in the cookbook. There are many recipes in here which you may have had in their traditional form and you would like veganated, veganated? That actually sounds a bit chemically um, veganized. Um, and so yeah, some of those recipes are like the Swedish meatballs, the crumbed and baked um, lemon and dill tofu fish and chips, which was really cool, and the mango lassi, which actually tastes like the one you'd sort of get at a restaurant, not a healthified smoothie sort of version. Another influence on some of the recipes in this cookbook include flavours and phenomenons that you might have heard taste really great but are wondering how you can like easily bring them into your everyday home cooking routine and the recipe I'm thinking of when I say that is the Ethiopian-esque curry because I say esque because it's not the traditional way of getting to the end result but it definitely tastes like um, Ethiopian food I've had. This curry is so simple and the flavours are so gentle but it's so good I can't describe it it's really delicious and unassumingly 12 out of 10. So um, to get to more technical things the cookbook is available in hard copy like this one um, or it's available as an ebook like a digital file PDF that you download on your computer after you purchase it from my Etsy shop which is called the HBot shop and the link for which will be down below. The prices um, are different between the two because this has got to be paid um, to be printed and bound so the hard copy is $25 and the e-copy digital file PDF is $15 Australian and the Australian dollar is not doing too great so when you go on there it'll show it in the currency where you hail from and you'll probably go woohoo because the digit on the screen will probably be, be will probably be a bit lower also you should know that Etsy add their taxes on top of that that's Etsy doing that not um, me lying to you and making it more expensive than what I'm saying now that amount of money which I just said the $15 and the 25 is what I will get and any little extra thing is what Etsy charges and takes for itself so I can use that platform to sell the cookbook in terms of shipping for the hard copy I can ship it worldwide haven't really had too many um, bizarre places or obscure places to ship it to but I have shipped it to all corners from Australia, New Zealand, um, United States, United Kingdom including Guernsey so don't worry UK people usually it's the UK people actually who ask can you ship it to us? I'm like yes absolutely absolutely but yeah all over Europe and worldwide just worldwide shipping is really bloody expensive um so I'm sorry I'm charging what it costs I would love to make it cheaper for you but when I've done that I've just lost money in that department so I'm sorry it costs that much maybe I should start training up pigeons and no we're vegan but do know in the shipping costs there's like the price of the envelope as well so there's that just to keep in mind but um, I would love to ship it to you if you are so interested if not it's okay this is not me forcing it down your throat thank you for listening till the end if you have thank you for sharing in on the excitement while I have dropped a little hints and whatnot over the last month and a bit I really appreciate it as I said before the link is down below and I think that's about it I will shut up about the cookbook from now on in videos going forward and hopefully I can be a bit more two video three videos a week from now on because this has been taking up a chunk of my time as you can imagine <laughs> so thanks for everything honey bunches love you and yay <laughs> bye